18 years since the fall. The city is a corpse, and we are the worms. We burrow in it, fighting for every useful piece of land to preserve ourselves from the terrors of the night and the horrors of the day. I know not who can hear my voice. I shall therefore speak a word unto hear. Anyone who dares to steal food will be hanged, and their bodies will be exposed. Every day we rise from dust to choose between bad and worse. choices we take to survive will create the world to come. You know the drill. Get to the nearest safe house and wait until dawn. Good night. Good luck. <laughs> Light 2 features a functioning ecosystem that reacts on multiple levels to the things you do and the choices you make. In the example we're about to show you, our protagonist undertakes a mission for the Peacekeepers, one of the many factions active in the city. They want you to negotiate with two survivors who are controlling and hoarding a water supply. Are you going to insult this with another final offer? Let's say you choose to carry out the Peacekeepers' orders, one way or another. Stay back! After this, you'll start seeing a significant change in the city as access to the water supply has allowed the peacekeepers to bring stability and develop the area. There's even running water for the people at street level. And that raises their morale and allows you to replenish your energy on the go. But there's a cost to this. The PKs have a rigid approach to law and order. So while the streets may be safer, it's only safe for those who side with them. So if you get on their bad side... Now let's return to that moment of choice. And instead of killing them, you choose to team up with this group to supply water in the black market. As you will see, this creates a very different set of consequences for the city. With water being a precious currency, it brings you access to new resources and trade. But this, in turn, attracts the worst type of people to the area. And this is just a single decision, one out of hundreds you'll have to make. But it allows you to carve out your own world, your own city from the apocalypse. Each player's game experience will be unique. And by the way, this is just what happens in the day. At night, well, things tend to get a lot darker. Okay, one nurse done. How many more you got? What the hell are you doing? Get down.
Shots. What's going on? Bunch of murderers and vagrants. We'd just as soon shoot you as the. <laughs> I'm low. Is that the intel you needed? Unfortunately, no. Ben didn't come through. Well, what exactly are you looking for? More info on the people responsible for this mess. What about you? Trying to save the world? I told Lieutenant Brenna I'd bring help. Good luck getting that. gonna hurt you. I said don't move. I'm just passing through. I'm gonna ask you to lower that weapon. I kill you on.
free. No, no, no! through here.
fences, they will actually try to attack you over the fence. They will now knock over cones and other construction signs if there isn't a way to walk around them. This will allow the undead to have easier access to you at any time. We've also improved some of their flocking behaviors. You will not be safe on top of a car or inside of an unbarricaded building. Our lead 3D artist Shirk has replaced all of our roads with new ones that look and run much better than our old ones. Our new roads are sleek and also blend perfectly into the terrain. Shirk has also been hard at work bringing us some new foliage. All of our placeholder trees have been swapped out for prettier ones that Shirk made himself. Since the trailer, I've been working on cleaning up the zombie AI and making hordes feel a lot smoother than they did before. We also upgraded some of their animations and got rid of the goofy looking ones. Our zombies are coded to be extremely efficient networking wise. This allows us to have a large amount of zombies even in our PvP multiplayer modes. Zombie damage is currently disabled in order to allow us to test their new animations for attacking. We've also received some feedback regarding the shading on our weapons as well as our weapon animations. We're also in the process of redoing the shading on our weapons in order to bring out all of the detail put into them by Dusty. We've also got a new animator on the team. Here's a test he did for us. We plan on bringing in proper melee combat as soon as we can with the help of our new animator. Progress here. <laughs> 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 